In this video, we are going to cover some more missing parts of the test that we could able to add the ability within our code so that we could complete this particular section for the API testing with Playwright. So the one thing is, we all know that we could able to get the response and everything is working fine as expected. But if we wanted to see the response in the console output, how do we actually do it? For example, if you try doing a print over here, for example, if you just do a console, something like this, and if you just do a JSON string, you can't really print the particular value. So if you run this authenticated uh, test, you will see that it is not really going to print any value for you. The reason why is because Playwright actually uses what is called as an iTest output helper interface to do the output in the console. So you need to use this interface iTest output helper and then you need to use this test output helper and then you try creating a read only property uh, and then use this particular variable to perform the operation that you're looking for. So you could just do the underscore out test output helper and then you can write line and then you can call the json string and you will see how it is going to be printed for you so you can just do a two string for that matter and let's try running this particular test this time and you will see that there is going to be an output coming up so this is how you could able to print all the responses or any strings or any value that you're trying to print that is so neat so that's exactly what you can do for the other tests as well. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it over here and I'm going to get that and let's try running the get product and you will see that the product is coming up. So this is how you could print the value out in the X unit world. And similarly, there's other important Thing that we have missed within our assertion part is you can see that we are doing two assertions sometime we might require three assertions as well for example if i want to verify if the product one has got an id which is the product id that should be basically one i guess something like that and because product id is an integer type and you know that the fluent assertion is very intelligent to tell you what you are trying to verify and similarly if you want to verify the response uh, status code uh, is going to be 200 as well so you are doing like three assertions here so while you run this test in a fine day it is going to work fine for you without any problem but let's say i'm going to move this 200 response thing to this place like the first line of assertion and I'm going to make this as 201 that I'm just trying to make it happen. Um, but this is not going to be the actual test. But I want this test to fail really. And you see that the 201 has got failed. But the rest of the test has not even executed. Which is these two tests has not even executed. So how do I come around this problem of fixing those issues of having all these three tested. But just report me whichever has got failed. And the way we could do in the fluent assertion world is by using the new assertion scope method. And this is quite interesting because you could now scope out all the assertions in one single scope. And once I try running it right now, you will see that the test is eventually going to fail even this time. But actually the verification has really happened. And the way that you can identify that is by making this test to fail as well. So let's say I'm going to make this as keyboards. And now if I try running it, you will notice that it is also going to tell that there is another test which has got the keyboards over here. Like there is an expectation failure here. And it is failing as well like this, right? And if you try making this as two, this guy. And now if you try running the other test you will notice that all the three tests is going to fail all the expect are failing but in the absence of the assertion scope you will notice that it is going to just execute only first test if the first test is failing then the rest of the tests are not going to be executed so that is the beauty of the assertion scopes in the x unit so you could be able to do that and that is highly useful while we do the api testing so that's about it of how you can use Playwright for API testing world.